Hey everyone, welcome to another video of Research Bus channel. And in this video, let's talk about the convolution operation over the text editor. So, convolution is a very well known technique in signal processing in which we try to encode the information of signal by applying the convolution operation. And in deep learning, we majorly use the convolution technique over the image data. So, we represent the image in the form of matrix, which are the mathematical numbers, and after that, we use to run the convolution filter over both the dimensions of the image. And using this, we extract the features from the image, which are later used to perform downstream tasks like image classification, object detection, etc. But when it comes to the text data, then we can't run this convolution filter over both the dimension of the image. And the reason being, we used to represent the text data in, in the form of embedding matrix, where each row represents the embedding for a given word. Now, when we run the filter, we can't run the filter across these embeddings because this embedding in itself is a representation of the complete word. So, we need to run the filter across the words only in one dimension only to extract the features from the textual data. And after that, uh, we use this convolution operation over the text because we want to extract the features from the n-grams of the text. And by n-grams, we mean like bigram and the trigram and four grams, etc. So, bigram is the representation of the continuous two words present in the text, trigram is the representation of the continuous three words, and four gram is the representation of the continuous four words. Now, when we want to capture the variations and capture the patterns from these bigrams, trigrams, and many more n grams, then applying the convolution operation becomes very easy, and then we can easily perform the downstream task over it. So, Given a text in the form of embedding, which is basically the embedding matrix, we can extract the 2 grams features and we can extract different number of features like 100 features of 2 gram, 100 features of 3 gram and 100 features of 4 gram and then later we can make the, uh, make the convolution layer and convolution operation more deep and then later once we connect it to the fully connected layer, we can simply stack it so that we can have the complete representation of the bigrams, trigrams and foregrams present in the textual data. And now let's look at the implementation of this deep learning model and then let's try to interpret how the model is performing over the textual data. Now let's look at the implementation of this deep learning model that is the convolution neural network model and then let's try to interpret this CNN model. So the data set which we are going to use here is the IMDB review data set in which we have 25,000 positive reviews and 25,000 negative reviews. So the data set looks like this. We have train data and test data which is separated and in train data we have the positive review folder and the negative review folder and in the same way in the test data also we have the positive review and the negative review folder. So for every review we are having the scores also like the number which is after the underscore is representing the scores and this is also separated by class like positive and negative. And we have this vocabulary file also available in which we have all the unique tokens, unique words which are represent across the complete data set. Now for the implementation of this deep learning model, we are going to use the PyTorch library and we are going to use the torch text here. And for the interpretation of this model, we are going to use the captum library. So for the torch text library, we first need to understand the field class and the text object and label object of this field class. So field class is used to define the preprocessing steps over the input data and the text object is used over the input data, for example, reviews here and the label object is used over the dependent variable of the input data, for example, sentiment here. And uh, we are going to define the techniques like tokenization equal to spacey, which means we are going to use the spacey tokenizer. And uh, we are going to pass the parameter batch first equal to true. And we are going to do this because CNN expects the input into the dimension of first batch and then the sentences. On the other hand, RNN expects the input in which we have first sentences as the dimension and then batches. So, we are going to apply this preprocessing steps here and after that we are going to load the data set. So 
generally what happens is uh, let's say we have the we can download some of the data sets uh, directly from the torch text so torch text supports the downloading of some of the data sets which are quite common and here i am directly using the because i already downloaded the data set so i am directly passing the path of the of the data set so that the data can be directly loaded from there but if you don't pass this parameter then also data can be downloaded from the website uh, directly by the torch text only and uh, after that so we are having around 17500 training examples and 7500 validation examples which in which some substitute 25000 examples and we have 25000 test examples so in this way we have 50000 examples for the complete data after that we are going to build the vocabulary so vocabulary is something which represents the unique words into the data and it assigns the index to each word so if the word like uh, let's say hello appears so we are having the index assigned to this word by which we can directly fetch the word so this is how we are going to build up the vocabulary and uh, we are like handling the out of vocabulary words and the length of the sentences by using the unknown token and the pad token and uh, after that we are using the glove embedding uh, to get the vocabulary and to assign the assign the vectors to the vocabulary so if we don't have this glow embedding then we can use the one not encoding also to to completely represent the vocabulary but here we have the glow embeddings available so we are directly loading the glow vectors and we are using it for the further task so here we build up the vocabulary using the loaded glow vectors and we are in the same way building up the vocabulary for the labels also and after that we have number of unique tokens as 25002 so 25000 which we already defined and two tokens are added for the unknown token that is for the out of vocabulary words and pad token that is for handling the length of the sentence and uh, after that we are let's look at the most common words in the vocabulary so we can have these words like the and and all those and uh, when we convert the index to a string and top 10 words if we look so we have this unknown token pad token and all the 10 words and uh, now we are going to create the iterators so iterators are something uh, which we pass on into the deep learning model for the training and evaluation loop so instead of passing the single example we used to pass the batch of examples and to iterate over this batch of example we used to create the iterator object of this complete train test and validation data so when we create the twitter object so we define the batch size to be 64 so the number of batches for the twin data is 274 and for the test data it's 391 and for the validation data it's 118 so if we multiply 274 by 64 so we would be getting the number of training examples that we have here here that is around 17500 now after that creating the batches let's look at one of the batch so we are going to get the first batch from the train iterator and after that if we print the shape of that batch then we are going to get the number of sentences in that batch that is 64 and the length of one of the sentence that is the length of the highest sentence present in the batch that is 1178 so this is how the representation of one of the batch and if we look at the representation of the first review that is the first sentence then it would be like uh, this complete 1178 long tensor and uh, if we look at the labels <coughs> then we would be having the 64 labels for the complete data set and after that we are going to create the cnn model so in the cnn model uh, we are defining the model in this way so we have the input channel input channel defines the let if we have the image and if we have the three components of the image that is rgb then the number of channel would be three but here for the text data we are having only one channel after that we are going to define the batch and batch is something like the batch size into number of reviews that is the number of sentences we are having so this is 64 cross the length of one sentence that is around 1178 
and after that we are going to define the embedding layer so embedding takes the batch size and for every sentence it represent it into the form of the vector so it would be a three dimensional vector then and after that because cnn expects the input into the format of this like first we need to have the batch size then number of channels then sentence length and then embedding dimension so we need to squeeze this embedding layer and we need to add one more dimension here that would represent the number of channels and after that we are going to define the kernel size for the convolution operation and then the pooling size and then we are going to define the cnn model that is defined above so why we are using this module list here is because if you want the different different engrams features so let's say first we define the complete cnn architecture for two gram features then later we are going to define the architecture for three gram features then four gram features and then we are going to stack over these different architectures we are going to stack the final layer of these different architectures so that's why we are defining the module list here so that these different architectures can interact with each other and can know each other so in this way we are defining the module and then we are defining the forward function after defining the embedding layers and the convolution layers and phonic connected layer and uh, after that we are going to define the features that we are giving into the model so the input dimension would be the dimension of the vocabulary size of the text object and after that embedding dimension is the representation size of the vector of each word then number of filters we want to use and what are the different n-grams we are using and then the output dimension so in this way we are going to define the model first and after that we are going to use the pre-trained embeddings which we are already feeding into the models embedding layer and um, after that we are also adding the embeddings for the unknown token and the pad token so this would be torch.0s and we are feeding it into the embedding matrix of the model and uh, after that we are training the model by defining the optimizer that it would be used to update the weights and the loss functions then we are iterating over this to define the uh, model's uh, training part and uh, then we are like uh, running it for the multiple epochs we are and for every iterator we are going to train the model and we are defining it here after that we are going to define the evaluation function over this model and that would help us to give give the epochs accuracy and overall loss in the epoch and uh, after that we are going to run the loop for different epochs and then we are going to call the functions which are defined above to get the accuracy and to get the loss functions now when it comes to interpretation of the model so i have already modeled which is already trained available at one of the location and after that i am loading this model and uh, over a unique set of the test data that is around like four or five examples i'm i'm going to interpret this model now for the model interpretation we use the integrated gradients algorithm and uh, we use the baseline vector also we also need the baseline vector which goes into the attribution object attribution method of integrated gradients algorithm which is used for the uh, models interpretability so here in the text data we can have the token reference base and token reference base is uh, used to generate the reference for each input token into the text data so that we can have the baseline for each input token into the text data and uh, then we are going to create this token reference index using this padding index so first we are getting the padding index and then we are going to create the object of token reference class then we are defining the integrated gradients layer and then we are defining the function that takes the model and the sentence of the text then it convert convert it into the form of indices and then it represents it into the form of embedding and after that we are going to take the prediction from the model which is loaded earlier and after that we are going to generate the token reference for every single word present in the text and then we are getting the attributions for the text and uh, then we are going to visualize those attribution values 
so simply calling the functions defined above over some form of text and uh, after that we are going to visualize the attribution values so we can know that for a given text what are the words which are highly important for determining the sentiment of the text so in this way we learned here how we define the convolution neural network model over the text data and how we interpret that model over the text data now we can use this interpretation so that we can know that why the model is performing in this way and we can further fine tune and improve the model that's all for this video uh, thanks for watching watching this video and see you in the next video thank you